completing the square, we find the vertex of the quadratic function. We find vertexes. We find x and y intercepts. We find a function if we know two points that are on it. We will also solve word problems with quadratic functions. And these last two we already know how to do because of the way we did transformations, so we don't really need to worry about those two. Here is our first quadratic function, negative 3x squared plus 27x minus 24. That's my function. How do I know that's a quadratic function? What is it about it that makes it quadratic? The 3x squared plus 27x. Yeah, that part's unnecessary. What's the absolutely necessary part that I have to look at? And it says, ah, that's quadratic. Square, square, square. Yeah, it's the square. The highest exponent in the function is a square. That means this is a quadratic. If there was a square in it but it had a cube, no, nope, that one wouldn't do it. No square, not quadratic. Higher than a square, not quadratic either. X squared is all I need. Or it could be Y squared and be quadratic and Y. That's okay. We want to find the vertex. Well, the easy way, okay, I shouldn't say easy way. There is something called vertex form in your quadratic functions. And that would be this form. F of X equals A times X minus H squared plus K. In this form, the point H comma K is the vertex. So if we take this function and rearrange it to be in this form, then we can easily read off the vertex. Now the easily part is only the reading off the vertex. Does anybody know what I do to this function to get it in this form? Find out what uh, k is an h. No, not any old x and y. There are special x and y. So the that's slope. why they get it. It's different. the slope, the points of x and y? Yeah. There is no slope because it's not a line. I remember doing it. I forget. Yeah, you heard it. I heard somebody say it. Completing the square. If I go use this function to complete the square, through the process of completing the square, I can get it into this form. Now, how do you rearrange everything to make it look like this? Step number one.
what's the only thing that doesn't have an X? H. That H, so when I move it to the left, what will it be? <coughs> I subtract 8, so it'll be negative 8. So I'll have f of x over negative 3 minus 8 equals x squared minus 9x. Step 3. This is where we're actually getting close to actually doing something related to completing the square. You want to take the coefficient... So take the coefficient of the x. What's the letter that we usually use to represent the coefficient of the x? Do you guys remember what letter we use your quadratic formula? No. No, this one's a, right? This one's a. Uh, b. This one is b. b. So we're going to take the b, but this new b is a negative 9. So take b, take b, divide it by 2. and square it. So that means I'm going to take negative 9 divided by 2 and square it, which gives me 81 over 4. Yeah? In general, when you're completing the square, is it, it negative b over 2a squared? Or? No, there's no 2a at all. The form, that, that formula that you have is a shortcut, and we don't let you use it in this process. It's a shortcut for finding the vertex. It is not going to have you help you complete the square part. So now, step four is to add this thing, add part three, to both sides of the equation. So on the left side, I have this big mess, f of x divided by negative three minus eight plus 81 over 4, and on the right side I have x squared minus 9x, and here's where I don't simplify. I'm going to add in plus negative 9 halves squared. The reason for not simplifying is if you have a really messy thing, not simplifying makes it easier to factor. Now we have to come over here and do step 5. We're going to factor the right side. Now some of you I know don't like factoring, but this factoring is always the same process and it's actually pretty easy. So the left side is still f of x divided by negative 3 minus 8 plus 81 over 4. And the right side is set up so that it's going to be factored into something that we can just square. It always has an x at the beginning. The part that goes here is this number that was in the parentheses before we did the squaring. So it's the number that I stuck right here. So in that case, it was a negative 9 over 2. So this is minus 9 over 2. This process is set up so it will always factor that way. So if you look at it and go, I have no idea how to factor this, because some of them are kind of messy fractions, that will always be the way it factors. And then finally, we move everything back over. Wait, say that again. How will it always factor? It will always, this number right here, hey. the negative 9 over 2, hey. is the number that I calculated here before I squared. Hey. And it will always be that way. So the last part is just no. the annoying move everything back over. Just remember it. <laughs> so back to the right. I should learn this go right. There's no F in that word. All right, let's see. Anything I want? Who wants to move? Pick something to move back. Anybody have preferences? Oh, yeah. Uh, for part five. No matter what numbers we use, it will always factor out to that form. It will always factor that so way. It will always be x and then... And then whatever that thing is, when you took your b divided by 2. This is always going to be your b divided by 2. And if b was negative, then this is negative. If b was positive, then this is positive. Or a plus. Um, we add 8 to 